Hey guys, how's it going? It's Target here. Welcome to the very first episode of what's called Target's Tirades. Alright, this is basically my rant series. Uh, during a couple of Live the Life episodes, I started ranting about a couple of things, you know. Things that piss me off, like allergies versus, um, what was it? Allergies versus intolerances. I, arg I argued about that. And people thought it was really entertaining when I ranted and somebody suggested that I do a series about it. So... With a little bit of word doctoring and some uh, alliteration, I managed to come up with Target's tirades. This is the first episode that I'm going to do. Now, the way this is going to work is I'm going to talk about my opinion of things. Um, you know, it can be something from simp as simple as uh, allergies to something more complex. Like, uh, I don't I don't know. What's, what's a big topic that always comes up? I don't know. Anyway, like gay marriage, like things like that. It'll be me ranting about things. Now, I'll rant about one side or the other. I, and I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to be as candid as possible. I really want to make sure that people understand where I'm coming from. And I want people to be entertained. Absolutely. I mean, there's things that you're probably going to agree with me with me. <laughs> you're going to agree with me on. And then there's things that you're probably going to disagree with me on. And that's the whole great thing about this YouTube is I can talk to you guys. You can talk to me back in the comment section. It's fantastic. So if you guys want to, if there's something you want to hear me talk about or rant about, um, put a suggestion down below. Now, obviously, it's just going to be one rant per video, um, one topic, unless they're really small topics. But I'm going to aim at one rant per video to get, you know, get through it all and at least, you know, bitch about it enough so I can call it a video. Anyway, so for today, we're going to be talking about hand sanitation, sanitizing, and cleaning of surfaces and stuff like that. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because of my vacation. But we, before we get into this, I need to explain something first. And that is how your immune system works. So, your body is just like your brain, alright? Your brain, well, I mean, your brain controls your whole body, okay? Now, you know how everybody says you can't learn to win unless you've lost, for, un, un, until you learn to lose, to, uh, un, until you learn to lose, right? You don't learn to succeed until you've made a mistake. That's basically what that means. Your body works exactly the same way, okay? Exactly the same way. Your body screws up from time to time. There's things that it doesn't know how to deal with, like the common cold. Your body doesn't necessarily know how to deal with that strand of the cold, all right? Now, the great thing about your body is once you've gotten that cold, you can't get that cold again. Now, when you, when you get sick again after that, that's because it's a different strand of the cold or the flu virus or whatever. That's why every year they offer a new immunization for the flu virus because the flu virus itself mutates. It adapts to us, just like how we adapt to it. Every single bit of bacteria, disease, or germ adapts over time so that it can, it can survive because that's what it is, right? Uh, influenza, the virus, is a living thing. It's a living thing that you get and it feeds off of you. And if it did not adapt to our systems to be better than our systems to get past, it would die. And that's what it doesn't want. That's why your body does its best to remember how to take care of things um, in those circumstances. Now there's people that do have autoimmune deficiencies. So basically that means people that don't have an immune system capable of handling day-to-day -day activities. Uh, you can get sick very easily from people that have colds. Uh, one of the diseases that actually causes autoimmune deficiencies is mono, the kissing disease. That one actually can cause you to become sicker a lot easier. So what people that have mono, the majority of the symptoms that they suffer from are fatigue due to it, but also the the conditions of the, the illnesses they get, they come down with after their immune system has been compromised. Now, how do you build an immune system? Well, you throw a ton of bacteria, diseases, viruses at your body, it learns to cope with it, and then you won't have to deal with that later on in life. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I remember, or it was popular before, I don't know if they still do it now, but they used to have chicken pox parties. It wasn't really a party, and the kids didn't know that, but when one kid got chicken pox, and I think they did an episode of South Park on this, which is kind of funny, when one kid got chicken pox, the other parents, the friends, would send their kids to get chicken pox too. To get the, 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 the illness. Do you know why? Many people don't know why that is. 
Because once you have, well, I mean, some people do. Once you have chicken pox, the odds of you getting chicken pox once again is like 0.001%. I don't know if that's actually a number, but you have a 99% success ratio at, rate after that. Give me a second, got a sip of water. You have a high a rate of success of killing off um, chicken pox. Now, it's not impossible to get it again, but it's very, very rare. And the reason why they want you to get it at a young age is because with chicken pox, complications can arise from that when you're older. Believe me, people, the majority of people who die from chicken pox are old people. And they are people that have never had chicken pox in their entire life. All right? Still think that we need to sanitize everything all the time? So this is the example that, I mean, I've seen it in life uh, on a daily basis. The amount of people that, like, if you go into any store, the amount, you, you know, little pocket packs full of alcohol rubbing, like, hand sanitizer, that is everywhere. Everywhere you turn, you've got something like that, all right? Like, uh, what's that place called? Uh, Bath and Body Works? Is that right? Bath and Body Works. My wife takes me there, okay? I, I know the place. Believe me. I, I'm not ashamed to say it because at least I have some kind of an idea what, what, what to buy when Christmas comes around. But they have... Little things that you can put, the like little holders that you can put these in and strap them off your, your purse or uh, gym bag or whatever you want so it's easily accessible. That's how obsessed we are with over-sanitation. That's how, over, how obsessed we are with sanitation is what I should say. Now, the, the reason why this kind of came to light was when I was on my honeymoon. Uh, part, of our, part of our trip that we took was a, uh, a cruise. We took a cruise from Miami. And hit up a couple Caribbean spots. I'm sure I'll be doing a video about it soon. I'd imagine I'll, I'll show you a couple things. Uh, but anyway, one of the major things that I noticed, and I've been on other cruises before, uh, throughout the ship, you know, the dining areas, uh, many of the common areas, they've got hand sanitation stations. You know, uh, little places where you just put your hand underneath, it gives you some you know, some alcohol, you wipe it on your wipe it on your hands, good to go. All right. They also try to promote, you know, put little dispensers beside the door beside the bathroom doors so you can with little tissues you grab the tissue you open the door all right so you can see that they're trying to avoid this the spread of illnesses disease and what have you now on this particular ship we went with our new norwegian cruise line i'm sure there's some of you that have gone out there and we we're on the brand new ship uh the getaway that's the one the norwegian getaway at sails from miami we we're on the brand new ship it just started in february it's pretty cool but anyway uh deck 15 <clears throat> is where the uh, the buffet was, all right? So the, the main restaurant, basically, where people were eating casually. As soon as you step off that elevator or those stairs, there is somebody there with a bottle of alcohol spraying your hands. And the, the little saying that all these people use is washy-washy, happy-happy. Every single time I went for food, Washy, washy, happy, happy, washy, washy, happy, happy, spraying my hands with this shit. I just washed my hands. I literally have not touched anything at all. I walked out of my room, up the elevator. Some guy held the elevator for me, rode the elevator, got off, haven't touched anything, and now you're going to spray my hand with it? Please. And they were insistent. They wouldn't let me buy sometimes. Not every time. Lots of times I could sneak in. But sometimes you'd go... And they'd stop you. They'd try to spray your hands with these damn bottles of alcohol. I'm like, for God's sake, let me go. It's annoying. All right? Now, on a cruise ship, it's kind of a different story. All right? Now, there is... Uh, what the hell is it called? I can really quickly Google it. Hold on. Uh, let me just Google it. Norovirus. That's what it is. Norovirus. It's an incredibly, incredibly infectious stomach flu. That's it's notorious for spreading on cruise ships. The reason why everybody exists in incredibly close quarters for an, in in an extended period of time. There have been numerous norovirus outbreaks on cruise ships all over the world, and so I can I, I can kind of understand where they're coming from. But I felt that this sample of the sanitation, the hand wiping, and the spraying, and what have you, was was kind of an example of what we're dealing with in daily life, all right? Now, I eat, I, I swear to God, this is how I live my life. I wash my hands, and every now and then, I wash my hands every time I go to the washroom, 
You know, I wash my body and everything when I wake up and I have a shower. All right. Every now and then, maybe once a day, I will sanitize my hands when I'm existing in normal world. Now, because I live in I live in the law enforcement world, I tend to hand sanitize quite a bit because what I'm coming into contact with and what I'm touching with my hands is so disgusting. If you didn't wipe your hands, you could get very, very sick. But when you're out, out and about, doing your thing, doing your daily shopping, for the most part, you do not need to hand sanitize that much. Now, when you're, if you're as old as I am, I'm not old, but if you're in, if you're born any time before 1995, I would say, you're probably okay. Your immune system got the chance you needed. Any time after 90, 1995, so 96 and later. Your immune system probably hasn't much had much of a chance because we've had this hand sanitizing going on all the time. Think about it. If you're a young kid growing up, all right, and you're in today's world, all right, we're talking today's world, not the world that I grew up in or my parents or more my grandparents, all right. <clears throat> um, you are constantly washed. You're constantly hand sanitized. You know, uh, you make sure you don't touch anything anymore. You know, you're grabbing pieces of cloth, to open doors, things like that. Whoop, pardon me. Bump my mic. Um, I talk with my hands. So that's why I always hit my mic. Um, you never get sick. You're like, awesome. My child never gets sick. Never gets sick. He, he, pra- he practices proper hand washing, hand sanitizing. You know, he uses the little papers. He doesn't share anything with anybody. Um, okay, question. When your son becomes 50 and he gets some kind of a, a, you know, a flu that he should have gotten as a kid, should have gotten as a kid, but now because he's 50, he actually has a higher risk to develop complications due to this flu because he never got it when he was younger and never established the immunity, immune system, immunity. That's where it all stems from, guys. You're immune to it. It can't hurt you. When Everything gets much worse when you get older. It's not just hair growing gray, going gray and falling out or things sagging. It's your, your health. Your health deteriorates because your body cannot fight infections, viruses, and bacteria as well as it could. So it's important. It's so important to get sick as a kid. It is. It's so important to get sick as a kid. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what about, you know, uh, immunizations. Are you are then against immunizations? Absolutely not. Immuni- immunizations are the exact same thing as getting sick. All right. You don't get sick. And I'm going to touch base on that in a second. One little thing about that. Okay. Is about uh, immunizations actually make you sick. All right. That That's the, the next little part about this one. Because I feel like they kind of tie in. But immunizations. I can't remember which actress it was. Hold on. We're going to Google that right now. Actress. Immunization. Jenny McCarthy. That's right. Jenny McCarthy. This dumb bitch promoted not giving kids immunizations. Not giving kids immunizations. Okay? Look, guys. There's certain diseases. There's certain viruses that you can... If you get, you've got them. Sorry. For the most part, you're screwed. Alright? Like, hepatitis. For God's sake, hepatitis, all right? You can get a vaccination for hepatitis. Get the vaccination for hepatitis because if you get it, you're stuck with it. And then you're screwed. You're not screwed, but it sucks. Life sucks, all right? I mean, I think it's, I don't think they get immunized for hep C. It's just hep A and B. Uh, but that's enough. I mean... You don't need your liver liver infected by hepatitis. And you're all jaundiced and weird and shit. You don't need that. I remember that was a big scare probably when I was in uh, elementary was hepatitis. That's when they vaccinated you. Rabies. Vaccinate for rabies, okay? They do vaccinations for rabies. So you're good to go. All right? But if you're promoting your children not get vaccinations, you're you have the potential of killing them. Honest to God. You have the potential of killing them. That is not up for debate. It isn't. It's, it is what it is. You are killing your child. If that kid gets bit by a rabid dog, your kid has rabies. 
And as far as I'm aware, there is no cure for rabies. Let me double check that. Cure for rabies. Let's take a look. Um, well, apparently there's some they they've there's some stuff behind it that maybe it's not so incurable. But back in the day, there was no cure for rabies. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there's no cure for rabies when the once the signs of rabies appear. It is then inevitably fatal. Now that's the problem. There's no way you're gonna be. There's no way. There's sometimes you're not gonna know if you're bit by a rabid animal or rabid person until it's too late, until you show the symptoms. So, rabies vaccinate for. Uh, hep, um, what's it called? Oh Jesus, I can't remember. It starts with a T. T not tinnitus. Not tinnitus. Oh man. Let's see. I can't remember what it's called. It's, I'm sure somebody will, uh, tetanus, tetanus shots. Tetanus shots uh, are something that you need to be immunized, immunized for as well. So again, it, it, the list goes on and on for things you can immunize for, as well as the cold, the common flu. Get the immunization for the common flu because it, it can actually really cause complica complications. And believe it or not, I mean, older people and younger children are the most susceptible to the to influenza, um, people with immune compromised diseases, as well as Aboriginal people, like Native people or Indian or whatever you want to call them, they are more susceptible to influenza. It's a real fact. Okay, I'm not making that up. That is a fact. Check it out. If you're if you're Native, your immune system is not as good. You should get the flu virus e or the flu vaccination every year. All right. <clears throat> okay before one more thing before we wrap everything up and that was on the immunization causing you to be sick okay now the way an immunization works is it provides your body with a, a the tiniest amount of that disease or virus or whatever it is okay the tiniest amount it basically t from there it gives your body the blueprint of how to fight it off by giving it a sample of it. It's just like drinking, okay? If you, if anybody's ever had a hangover or something like that, you know how, you know the term, the hair of the dog? You know, the hair of the dog that bit you? You drink beer or drink some alcohol again in the morning and your hangover is gone? It's somewhat like that. You've given your body the blueprint on how to fix itself is by the alcohol that allows you to come down a little bit better. It's sort of the same. But, I mean... With that, with the with the immunization, it, it tells your body like this is what this is what you need to fight against. You get it? I get it. I understand. I know what to do now. Perfect. Good. No more problems. You're not going to get the flu that year. Doesn't mean you're not going to get a cold, but you're not going to get the flu, which is influenza. That's what the flu is short for. Influenza. Get it? So, get that. Please get that. Anyway, but it's not going to make you sick. It's not enough to make you sick. People go, oh, I got the flu anyway. Okay. Another another unknown. Thing that people don't or something that people don't know about okay the reason why i know all this shit my mom's a nurse i should know that i should state that the reason why i grew up with this all around me i'm sure i've got a few things wrong but that's okay you guys are getting the gist of it that's all that matters all right so um it it doesn't it's not enough to get you sick and like i said some people say that oh i got sick anyway well you know what it takes about three weeks three weeks 21 days I think it's between anywhere between 14 and 21 days for that immunization to take effect. You can still get it within those 21 days. Your body is slow to learn. Okay, sometimes it's slow to learn when when it gets something like that. It's like it's like taking an encyclopedia. Every inf every injection is like an encyclopedia, and you your body is sitting at a little desk in a nice open white room. That's all it is is the desk, and. The doctor or the nurse comes along, sets down this encyclopedia on the desk in front of him and says, there you go. Well, what's this? This is the latest flu vaccination. Okay. Read through it. Okay. And it'll tell you how to fight it off when it comes around again. All right. And so your body sits there for the next 21 days reading this book on how to get or how to prevent being sick. That's all it does. So your body is slow. All right. So it takes a while for it to work into your entire system to get into all your, all your cells because all your cells have to have that, that little code. Your brain has to have that code. Your, you know, your your blood has to have that code. So, once it has that code, you're good to go. But you need to wait. So that's why people still get sick, 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 
or some people get a little bit sick, that's just probably you acting like an idiot. All right? What do you call that? Placebo effect. That's exactly what it is the placebo effect. If you don't know what the placebo effect is, for Christ's sake, Google something. God damn it, I don't, can't Google everything for you guys. Anyway, I'm going to wrap things up here. So in summary, you do not need to sanitize as much as you do. All right? Keep your surfaces clean. Don't mess around with raw chicken. Keep your surfaces clean. Wash your hands after going to the washroom. I would say probably wash your hands before you eat. It's probably safe practice. You don't want to put something in your mouth. It's, it's not so much like sickness. It's gross. Like, I eat shit off the floor. I still eat shit off the floor. Not, not feces shit, but stuff. I eat stuff off the floor. It drops on the floor. Five second rule. Ten second rule. Oh, we almost had to switch to the 15 second rule. I don't care. I really don't care. I will eat off the floor at my work. I'll eat off the floor at my home. The only place I kind of have a funny feeling about is eating it off the, when it lands on the carpet. Because it lands on there and there's like hairs and shit in there. You can't see it. It gets stuck to like if you're having a piece of bread with with butter. Ah, you know what? Bread and butter I'd probably chuck. Because it's, it's very receptive. It's a very receptive surface to butter. But like a pizza. You drop pizza. Especially pizza. Jesus Christ. You drop pizza on the ground. Pick it up. But if it lands on the carpet, eh, I'm kind of I'm kind of iffy about that. It's just my opinion. I'm not going to get sick from it. But I don't really want to be eating dog hair. I have a dog and I don't want to drop it on the carpet. Put them beads in my mouth. Dog hair in my mouth. It's disgusting. You ever have a hair in your mouth? It's annoying as hell. Anyway. I've gone on too long. I've gone on 20 minutes about hand sanitation and immunization. Unbelievable. I never thought I'd be able to do it. When I first set out with this video, I was like, okay, 10 minutes maybe. Maybe I will need two, you know, two things for these tirades. But one sounds like I can talk enough. Unbelievable. 20 minutes of talking. Oh, you don't need to hand sanitize as much as we do. Okay? Calm the fuck down with that shit right now. And stop. Please, God, stop protecting your children from being sick. If you're a parent and you're protecting your child from being sick, you will be the reason why they die of the flu when they're 60. You will be that reason. Not the flu, of a common cold. Because they didn't get it when they were 7. Because you, they're popping fucking vitamin C's and hand sanitizing like crazy. Good God. I'm never sick. Kids now are sick all the time. Like kids that are growing up and are now working are sick all the time. All the time. My my parents, when they were when I mean obviously they're older now they're getting they're getting a little bit sicker, not sicker but they when they get sick they it lasts a little longer you know, but when they were in their you know, thirties forties, they were go getters like all the time never sick I think I can recall. I can't recall a single time my father was sick. The last time. Yeah, the last last time my mom, I saw I've seen my mom sick a few times now that she's older. The last time I saw my dad sick, or growing up, I saw my dad sick. Never, never saw my dad sick, not even once. You know, and he's born in 1949. He grew up in an, an, a completely different area, completely different era, not area so much, but different era. They didn't hand sanitize anything. They rarely washed their hands. They would bathe once a week, and they would reuse. They didn't have enough money to afford a bath for everybody. There were 10 kids in his family, and they all shared the same bath water. Now we would find that disgusting. Back then, that was life. And you know what? They are healthier for it. They are absolutely healthier for it because they've been exposed to it. You have to be exposed, guys. Anyway, I'm going to stop before I go on for another 20 minutes. So, please, down in the comments below, what do you want to hear me rant about? This is Target's tirades, boys. You got to keep it coming. This one was over. This one was sanitation and immune systems. Uh, obviously, that sounds more like a science lecture than anything else, but I feel kind of strongly about it. I don't know. I don't want to be a douchebag about it, but fucking let your kids get sick. Jesus Christ. Anyway, until next time, I'm Target Audience, and I'll catch you guys out wherever the... F I almost swore. Wherever you are. See ya!